All right. So there's this old saying attributed to Mark Twain that it's, it ain't what you don't know that gets you into trouble. It's what you know for sure that just ain't so. And the reason this matters is because there's a whole bunch of things that you, I, everybody who's been in the military has learned about how to manage your leave that can lead to some problems if you have what's called special leave accrual. Now, normally, special leave accrual is associated with soldiers who are deployed into a combat zone that is tax exempt. You're deployed, you can't take leave, so the Department of Defense allows you to go over the max number of days of leave, typically 60 days. So now let's take a look at these three soldiers, Private Ruiz, Mass Sergeant Hughes, and Sergeant Major Clay, and see what they learn about leave, how they manage their leave, and how special leave accrual plays into this. So first, let's just look at the basics with Private Ruiz. So U.S. Code sets the number of days of leave that a service member gets. They get two and a half days per month. That works out to your 30 days of leave that everybody normally thinks of. Now looking at the chart at the Y axis, you'll see that I've got the total number of accrued days of leave. And I've got a red line at the 60 day mark, which is normally the max number of days you can carry over into the next fiscal year. At the bottom, I've got the months and each month represents the first day of that month. So if Private Ruiz joins the Army on the 1st of October, in the month of October, she has no leave. But by the 1st of November, she's accrued two and a half days of leave that she earned in October. Then in December, she gets another two and a half, brings her up to five, and it keeps ticking along like that as she goes throughout the fiscal year. Now, let's suppose that Private Ruiz is going to take some leave. This gets to the next thing about leave that's important to know. That is, the way that leave is accounted for is last in, first out. So imagine Private Ruiz has accumulated leave up until April, and she decides that she's going to take five days of leave. Well, the five days that she's going to take are going to be the days that she earned in February and March. You see how they come off the top. And so she still has the leave that she earned in October, November, December, January. But by May, she's just adding April to it. So if some time passes and in July she takes five more days of leave, she consumes the June and the May. You see how by the end of the year, she still has the October leave. This last in, first out manner of accounting is going to cause some challenges when we get to more sophisticated situations. All right, so let's go look at someone who's been in the Army a little longer, Master Sergeant Hughes. Now, Master Sergeant Hughes is one of these guys who crosses the fiscal year with a lot of days of leave. You can see that he enters the new fiscal year with 55 days of leave. And he knows that by the end of the year, he has to get back down under 60 days. So November, December, January, now he's starting to go over that 60 day line. You can go over that 60 day line in the middle of the year, but you just have to be under it at the end of the year. And then he takes a big block of leave, goes visits his family in March, knocks himself back down to 37 and a half days of leave. And then he continues to accumulate so that at the end of the year, he's going into the next fiscal year with over 50 days of leave, but under 60. Now, the reason he does this is because if he's over 60, he will lose leave. That's one of the things that most people know. But watch what happens when Master Sergeant Hughes faces special leave accrual due to COVID. See, on the 11th of March, 2020, the Department of Defense authorized service members to accumulate special leave accrual because of COVID. And that stayed in effect until the end of fiscal year 2021. What that means is that those soldiers are allowed to accrue more leave than 60 days. So here we have Master Sergeant Hughes. He has gone over 60 days, but he's not going to lose anything in FY 2020 because of the special leave accrual. 
Again, everything seems fine. Now, let's see what happens to Master Sergeant Hughes in FY 2020. He comes into the year with 75 days of leave. And he's able to do that because of the special leave accrual that he's built up. Now, he does what he has always done before. He's going to take 30 days of leave. In fact, he does it in December. But here's where he starts to run into a problem. Even though Master Sergeant Hughes was authorized to carry over 75 days of leave, because he used up all of his special leave accrual, he essentially undid that rule. He essentially reset himself back to 60 day cap. And so if he doesn't take any more leave than the leave he takes in December, by the end of the fiscal year, he's going to lose all the leave that is above 60 days. This comes back to Mark Twain's quote, just taking 30 days of leave is not sufficient to make sure that you won't lose leave. Now let's take a look at Sergeant Major Clay. Now Sergeant Major Clay is a little bit different, right? He's one of these Sergeant Major guys. He was working hard all through the pandemic and he racked up a ridiculous amount of leave. In fact, he comes into FY22 with 90 days of leave, 30 of that uh, that is special leave accrual. He starts accruing leave as he moves through fiscal year 2022. And what he does is he takes 30 days of leave in April. Now you'll notice that that eats into his special leave accrual, but it doesn't completely consume it. Now that means that he has set a new standard for how many days of leave he can carry into the next fiscal year. He started able to bring 90 days in, but he has now reduced it to 75. And so if he takes no more leave by the end of the fiscal year, he will lose any leave that he accrued in FY22. So what? Right? This sounds like a problem for soldiers. And it is, because if you're a soldier and you've accrued special leave, then you're going to have to time your leave so that you don't lose it. But I submit to you that this is also a problem for leaders of soldiers. Whether you're military or you're civilian, if you have soldiers working for you, you need to make sure that your soldiers take their leave. That's just sort of basic leadership. But here's why you might really care. If your organization has a bunch of military people in it and they are unaware of this rule, but become aware of it, you may find that there is a surge of leave in September. And what's more, this isn't just an FY22 problem. This issue is going to stay with us for another two years. So knowing who in your organization has special leave, how much they have and how they're managing it is going to continue to be a leader's task for the next two years.